This past summer was a strange one. And it was exactly those strange circumstances that brought me and my guest today into one gym. Justice Allen is one of the best basketball players that Winnipeg has produced over the last number of years. I happened to play against him once in high school. Um, it didn't go well for us. He was a year older and a whole lot better. And he's continued to ascend the ranks of the game of basketball. He was a five-year player at the University of Manitoba and is currently playing professional basketball in the first division in the Czech Republic. We discuss what life is like as an overseas pro and especially in these turbulent times of stopping and starting due to the pandemic, how he's grown into a leader and what the greater basketball Manitoba and the other pro guys in the city, what that community has done as a benefit to him. I talk about it personally at the end, but getting to see those guys work all summer was a blessing to me. And I was so appreciated to Justice and the other guys for both putting their arm around and mentoring some of the younger guys that I work with while it was teaching time. But once it became time to compete, they were the first ones to hold them accountable and chew them out if they had to. I know I look forward to many more years of working with Justice and the rest of that community to try to elevate the game of basketball um, in our province. Without further ado, here is a conversation with Justice Allen. I am now joined by my friend, Justice Allen. Justice, how are you today? I'm good, man, I'm good. Been better, but I can't complain. Yeah, man. Um, for those of you who don't know, Justice is a professional basketball player who is currently playing in the Czech Republic uh, in their first division, I believe, right? Yeah. And luckily enough, their season just kind of started started back up again. So we have some basketball that we've been I've been able to watch, and he's been able to play. Um, my first question was, what you guys were in lockdown for about a month? What was some of the things that you did to pass that time? Because obviously, you weren't allowed to do your job. Yeah, man, it was it was pretty tough at first. Like there's for the first fourteen days of the lockdown, because my whole team pretty much we all got tested positive for COVID. Mm. So we couldn't even we couldn't even leave the house essentially for it couldn't even go to the store, get some food type thing. So that for the first 14 days were pretty tough. And it was like it definitely it definitely was hard to stay positive because you're thinking like what when is what's gonna happen next? Like are we gonna are we gonna have the rest of the season? Like what's going on? But just tried to stay sane, man, uh doing some reading, just talking to people back home as much mm -hmm. as I can and just trying to work out with whatever I had in the house. Like I have some bands, like stuff like that, but yeah, just trying to stay in shape. Cause at the same time, it's like, we can't play basketball, but you know, what well, the second it starts up, they're going to expect us to be in shape. Like, like nothing happens. So you got to have to try to stay in shape as much as you can. Then after that first 14 days, uh, we still couldn't get in the gym and stuff, but some of the guys we started doing, just like outdoor workouts and stuff, mm -hmm. like going for runs. That was probably the thing I did the most, just started going for runs a lot, probably like once every couple of days, go for a run, just just get outside and just feel like it's clear my head, have something to kind of kind of do, at least somewhere to go. But other than that, man, it's just a lot of hanging out, like Netflix, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> or just basic stuff, man. That, I guess that that's a scenario where like that's where – it really hits home that like this is professional basketball like it is your job like the fact that when you come out of that you, you are expected to be in shape and i guess that's something that would separate a guy with a high level of professionalism from a guy with not so high of a level yeah definitely like we so we pretty much went we we were off for what like four like i think five weeks maybe and then literally we went straight from we're off. We have like a week of practice and then we're back playing games. Now we're playing games, three games a week. So it's like, at the end of the day, they're trying to make money and they're trying to salvage yeah. whatever season they can. So they don't really, they don't really care that you guys and teams are going to be rusty. You guys are going to be rusty, but they just want to get back to it. So, but it is how, what it is. How's, how's the body feeling going back to that? The, the high school days of multiple games a week like that. Man, def definitely got to, got to start stretching a bit more, more than I was, uh, was used to that. I remember that first week back, man, I was, I, I kind of was feeling good the first, the first day or two. 
I remember I was talking to my girl and I was just like, I told her like, oh, she's like, how do you feel? And I was like, oh yeah, I feel good. Like, don't even feel sore or anything like that. Then like literally the next morning I woke up and my whole, my whole body was in pain. And like, I was like, man, I'm tripping. I need to chill out. So I, after that, I like started getting, started stretching more after practice and getting some work done with the trainer and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But now I'm feeling good. I'm feeling back into it. Yeah, because that's the, the 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 standard for European like overseas would be like maybe a game and a half a week, kind of over the course of yeah, usually like a like a when maybe like a Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday type thing. But some weeks you only you only have the one. But it's definitely so, condensed now. We got about three a week. It's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's not even you're not even playing that much at the U Sport level. Like you got yeah. like the you got the weekends and then yeah, U Sports you always just got two games and then. That's it, pretty much. So one of the things they're like, using use for the transition is, I know it's a long time ago at this point. You're old man, you get in there. Yeah, I know. One of the uh, one of the things I wanted to ask is like, obviously you were you were were you the number one player in your, yeah. your graduating class? Yeah. So yeah, I played against you. You were a killer. It's yeah, that that's that goes without saying. But what was you? What was your? If you can remember, what was your mindset going from? like number one player in your high school class and then joining a really good U of M team at that point. A lot of local guys, a lot of older guys kind of thing. Yeah, it was, it was good, man. And that's like pretty much the main thing that, that kind of pointed me towards U of M. Like, obviously it's, it's your local, local university and stuff, but more than that, it was just like the the progression they had been making with Shep and like the direction they were heading. And it was, they had become like a really solid team. So Mm. I, I definitely going into that, I just wanted to, just be part of that as much as I could and just like kind of kind of honestly like help put Manitoba on the map because I I know even from when we were playing team Manitoba back in the day like when Manitoba really didn't have too much respect in in like terms of basketball players and producing basketball so then it kind of started when we when we went to nationals when we were under 17 and we actually like we won a silver medal and that and that was Mm -hmm. that was good and it was a big confidence booster for us to like kind of show like yo we have really good players in in Winnipeg, like in Manitoba, and like we can compete on on the national on the national level. So like you don't have to go to mm-hmm. wherever school to to like to build a name for yourself or, or actually be successful. So it was really good going to UVM, and like you said, it man, there's some great teammates there. I got I got to play with like right away. Obviously Malik from we've been playing yeah. together forever, but then guys like AJ, Andre, Brett Jewell, like it was great. Keith ended up yeah. coming with us a couple years later, so it was a great like group of home t- homegrown talent. And it was just, it was really special just playing with those guys for that period of time and actually having the success we did, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then, so you guys made it, made it to nationals. Is that your third year? Um, no, it was my, it was my fourth year. I think. Fourth year. Yeah. And then how was, what was the, the, the mindset, sh- mindset shift? Like when you kind of, for for you know all intents and purposes, you reached like a pretty high goal that year, and then you knew the next year was going to be different. Um, yeah. What was your mindset going into that fifth year, where you were kind of the, one of the last guys kind of remaining from that squad and kind of the the leader, um, undisputedly? Yeah, uh, the mindset was uh, I'm I'm always been a realistic guy, so I kind of knew going into the season, like I knew we had some good players and we had some talent, but I I knew I'd been on through the trenches and I kind of knew like what it takes to get to two nationals like we did and how hard it was. Cause we had some great teams years before that didn't even make it. So, yeah. so I knew it was going to be, it was going to be a tougher season for us, but going into it, I just knew like I had to do whatever I could in my ability to, to help us to win and just kind of just keep those same principles we had that mm-hmm. we had built up with the other guys. And that just, even if we weren't going to be as successful as that group was, at least it, I keep the same level, like standard, and just hold guys to the same level of accountability. That hopefully those next guys can can kind of build on it and take it with them. Like they had, they had some great players, some great young guys. So, but they were just they were just too young at the time to to really like make a splash in in U sports. So, my my mentality was kind of just do whatever I can. Don't don't be like don't have my expectations too high and, and then just kind of kind of kill myself mentally. If I'm just, I'm just stressed out. We're not winning. We should be winning, blah, blah, blah. But just, yeah, just, just try to pass on some of that, some of the, the, the principles we had, just like how the older guys did when I, when I was there, when I was a younger player. So. 
And that's, that's, that's something that I've through just different people that I've talked to that once they kind of get to that leadership role and they're kind of phasing themselves out, like their focus almost becomes obviously if they're in a chance to win, they want to win, but it becomes passing along those things down to um, the next generation of guys. Um, one thing that I think, and this is maybe something that you can touch on, but I know that from watching it the last number of years, especially the, let's say the top half of, of can West, it's a really tough league. And do you want to just speak briefly on like some of the stuff that you learned or how it prepared you for now what you do overseas? Yeah. Canada West is, is a, is a really tough league, man. And that's, I think people kind of sleep on that. Like everyone always assumes OUA is like the top league and OUA has for sure the top teams. They have the Carlton's, mm-hmm. they have the Ryerson, but I think overall like U sports has more good teams. Like, mm-hmm. and that's, and that's the thing, like, there's they have everything in 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 or not used but in Canada West they have more good teams because it's just there's you have everything you have size you have guard play like it's spread out we have way more travel like it's 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 a different beast man but uh, every year you're just gonna you're gonna run into some powerhouses like like UBC Calgary Alberta that is just schools with like huge budgets and and great just players want to play there because they have the history of, of mm-hmm. going, of, of being successful. So I don't know, Canada West was a great experience, man. And like the style of play, I think is, is pretty similar to the, to like the European style. So it definitely like, it definitely suits making that transition to pro. Cause I know, I know some conferences like, like out way out East in the East coast, it's a bit different where they, they kind of play like a more small ball and mm-hmm. like, they don't really have too many bigs. So, and which, it's not really, it's not really um, the same. Once you get to the next level, you got to kind of be able to play, play both way, uh, both styles, you know? So it was good for sure. What, uh, what was the biggest, the biggest adjustment, if you can remember your first season overseas? Jeez. First, first biggest adjustment was probably just getting used to having such different range of ages on the team like my first year overseas we had probably three dudes who were 30 and 30 and up guys with kids yeah. um whatever guys who were yeah 28 then we also had like you got your young guys who were about only like 19 18 and stuff like that so first adjustment was just kind of like the team dynamic and stuff like that and just obviously the the language barrier but but also just the main thing is like the biggest difference is in, in college or whatever, high school, when you're playing and it's like, there's not as much on the line, I guess, in a sense, whereas when you're playing pro and it's a business, they, they, they put more value on mm-hmm. like, like winning and selling fans. Whereas like if you play, so if you play bad, it's like more pressure on you than if you play bad in college, it's kind of like, oh, whatever, like how ah, you played bad, but it's not like they're about to take your scholarship away or they're about to, like send you home whereas you play bad overseas or playing pro and you're not producing like they're not having that they're going to be talking to you they're putting more pressure on you they're they want results and if you don't give them you know you're going to be out of there so that's pretty much the main the main thing that you got to get used to and just kind of like being able to stay level-headed and like believe in yourself for sure what was what were some of the things that allowed you to if there was times that you kind of felt a little bit of that pressure um to kind of cope with that uh yeah man it's just just trying to like remember what got you here and like mm-hmm. you're here for a reason at the end of the day and just I remember at my first year I was I was struggling at some points and then I but I and I realized like I hadn't been like we had two practices a day so we're in the gym a lot but I haven't hadn't been kind of had, taking the time to get like my own workouts in my own like shooting on my own time so when I made like I think we had probably oh, maybe a couple more extra days off in one period of time. I just made sure a consistent effort to like get, try to get into a routine and get back into like shooting and, and working out on my own time. And then I just noticed that just getting back to stuff like that, that, that got me there made me start to have more confidence in my, my shots, stuff like that. And then results started coming, coming back how I wanted them to. So just kind of, yeah, just, just focusing on, on like the basics and the fundamentals and just making sure you get that in. And obviously it's the, the schedule's a little bit different right now, but 
typically over the last number of years, what's kind of a, what's a day in the life of an overseas pro kind of look like? Usually it's pretty much, they're pretty much all the same, man. Usually wake up about whatever, eight, eight thirty. got practice usually sometime in the morning. Usually you do a bit of a, uh, like a workout. You guys kind of half the guys will go work out. Half the guys will be on the court doing shooting or skill work, stuff like that. Then you guys will switch. Um, so that'll be about an hour, two hours in the morning. After that, go go grab lunch, late breakfast, whatever you want to call it. Usually, usually there's a there's like teams have an agreement with a restaurants out there. So a lot of the foreign players, we we all go eat together because we just we can eat there yeah. at these restaurants for free or whatever. So go go hang out there for a bit. Usually grab coffee. Definitely gotta grab coffee, and then usually back home for a couple hours. Maybe do whatever you gotta do, whatever you're into. If you want to read some nap some guys nap talk to people back home if they're up and maybe watch watch some netflix then you're usually back at practice and then usually in the night you go go pretty hard and probably practice for like two hours you, and then after that it's usually just get home make dinner yeah. maybe talk to some people and go to sleep man and just repeat the next day like it's pretty it becomes pretty tiring like just like the European, especially the teams I've played on, I don't know what other guys' experiences are, but they practice hard, man. And they don't really care like how tired people are. Like if you had a game yesterday, next day, like they're, they're making us run, like we're going hard every day. So by the end of the day, usually you're pretty, pretty exhausted. And like, so I know usually people want me to say like, oh, what did you do? I'm like, did you go check out the city and like stuff like that? And like, yeah, for sure. Sometimes you do, but eventually there's only so much you can see. And it just gets to the point where you're just like, man, I'm, I'm dead tired. Like I need to, I need to sit down. I need to relax for a little bit. And especially now for me, I'm the city I'm in now, I played here two mm, years ago. Yeah. So there's nothing here that I, that I haven't seen. Yeah. You're no longer now. a tourist. Exactly. No, that's 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 literally the same thing. I was talking to Cassie Bujan, and she's like, she's playing in Spain, right? And she's like, yeah, I'm usually just like laying in bed in between practices because I'm just gassed. Like, there's a, I got nothing in the tank. Definitely, especially at the start of the season, man. When you're still trying to get back in back in shape and stuff, it's the first couple of weeks are just rough. Well, and this this year especially because you we did you didn't have the prep that you normally have preparing to go overseas. No, not at all, man. It was crazy. Like we 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 had some runs here and there in the summer, but it's not the same as playing five on five. And even for me, I came, I signed here, and then I they they had already started playing games. So I literally mm. I got here, I had one practice, and then I played the next the next day. <laughs> it was my first game playing like whatever since March. So it was pretty, it was crazy, man. It I couldn't believe it at first. It was like it's just so different playing from just working out and stuff, but. They don't care. They just they just no, want to like let's, let's go. I think yeah. last 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 thing that I wanted to kind of touch on, and you brought up just a, just a little bit briefly there, um, both, both talking about the U of M and then just the fact of the summer. What has the impact of now having? It's probably about what five or six guys all kind of pursuing professional basketball in the city. Um, what has that done for you, or in terms of what's the positive aspects that you found from that? Well, the, the, the positive aspect mainly would just be like it's, you kind of have a community of guys like we're all friends so we all kind of share experience with each other and we all kind of support each other and we so you know like you're not the only one going through the same this shit that you're going through like they're going through it too and you can kind of compare experiences and watch each other's games and stuff like that but I think when we're back home to it it's good because it just allows us to to have like a higher level of competition to to, to work out with and train train at because at this like you you can go work out and go to random runs this summer but at the end of the day like I don't really gain too much from going to a run with a bunch of guys who don't play like mm. anymore and it just doesn't really doesn't really do too much for me at the end of the day it's better when I'm if I can go play with guys who are still playing still training hard and then we can push each other and get better like that um, but I, and I just think too, it's, it's good for other guys in the city, man, like coming up. Cause I remember when I was, when I was coming up, there was only really a couple guys I could remember that had been mm. playing overseas. Like I know like Chris, Chris Dick was yep. playing back in the day and or obviously Ur fan, but like more recently there hadn't really been any guys who, who had like 
legit legit careers overseas that I could remember. So like now I know that there's like multiple there's multiple guys. So it's really good. It's really great, especially for the players coming up, so they can if they they see okay I I I can train with this guy. I've, I worked out with this guy. I know this guy. He's playing overseas. I can talk to him about his experience. I can get advice from him. And then I can fight, figure out what I got to do to get to that next level. So I think it's good just to have the more people you have playing. It's, it just makes basketball better in the city and just gives more guys opportunity at the end of the day. Yeah, man. I know I've, I really appreciated all you guys um, coming through this summer and allowing being both an open book to some of the younger guys that I help out um, in terms of like teaching them in terms of different actions or reads um, that we'd set up and then on the flip side like when it became game time like chewing their ass out when they were competing with you guys um, <laughs> it was it was like it was the best of both worlds for them and I know they got a whole lot better over the summer and uh, I'm just yeah I'm very appreciative to both you and obviously the, the other guys that that came through this summer hey same with us we're appreciative of you though you say you saved us this summer with that if we didn't have you we would have been shooting on these outdoor courts and not only just the gym time, but you're, you're a great trainer and you, you definitely like helped us take our game to the next level and work on things that, that we don't really get to just, that you can't really just work on on your own and you see the game really well and you understand it. So I, I definitely learned a lot from you too this summer, just working out with you, man. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you for that, sir. And on that no note, <laughs> have a great rest of the day. <laughs>